Huh, interesting. That is cool. All right, let's see how this plays out. Just going to put this aside. Huh. Interesting. Hey, hey, I see people joining. Nice. I guess I did this right. <laughs> okay. 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 How's it going? Oh, I see. So it goes to YouTube and then it goes to LinkedIn. Ah, uh, that is amazing. That is amazing okay 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 this is very new to me i'm streaming to multiple platforms at the same time right now so i'm just kind of trying to see what it looks like but this is very interesting but first stream of the year happy new year everyone and it does seem like i might also be streaming to What's it called? Uh, to X, X, <laughs> X. That's what it's called. Oh, okay. Yes, I am streaming to X. That's very interesting. Okay, like I said, this is very new to me. Um, I'm streaming to multiple platforms right now. Um, so I'm streaming to YouTube, of course. Streaming to LinkedIn. Streaming to X, formerly known as Twitter, and now also streaming to Instagram. So that was really cool. I just wanted to try this out and see how it is, but Looks like a lot of people are in the chat. How is it going? Let me pull this over here and just respond to the chat. Um, good evening, Mark. How's it going? This is from LinkedIn. We have Michael. How's it going, Michael? Got Alwyn from YouTube. How's it going, Alwyn? Got Al Baker. Hey, uh, Al <laughs> uh, Baker. And we have CyberSafe. How's it going? We have Muhammad. How's it going, Muhammad? Raphael, how's it going? We got Dara, how's it going? We got Jason, good evening, Jason, how's it going? We got Deshard, how's it going, Deshard? We got James, how's it going, James? We got Tommy D. Ah, oh, man, this trips me up all the time. I need to remember the um <laughs> the uh, intonation again. Um, how's it going? <laughs> it trips me up all the time. We have Kaya D. How's it going, Kaya D? Um, we have some LinkedIn user. How's it going? Abe, what's good, Abe? Theophilus, how's it going? How did you do it? How did I do it? <laughs> How did I do it? How did I do it? <laughs> That's a funny question. All right. Um, yeah, I'm live everywhere. Um, so YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, or X, and um, uh, Instagram as well. So that is fun. That is fun. I just wanted to, I guess, pilot this and just see how it would look and what it would be like. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's sort of the same setup. It's the same camera, um, same lens, um, but just a new space. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Congrats on the cert, Jason. Uh, what cert did you do? Uh, a LinkedIn live. Yeah, I yeah, I agree with that. I typically only stream to YouTube, but I guess I'm just really trying to like put myself out there more in a good way this year. I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong or like secretive, so I'm not trying to hide anything. Whatever I'm going to do online or on my YouTube is going to be ethical and I'm not going to like do anything bad. So what's wrong in, you know, streaming to LinkedIn? So yeah, um, I guess you're going to be seeing more on LinkedIn streams uh, this year, especially given that I'm going to be doing like more technical stuff. I guess we can, we can make do with um, a larger audience for that kind of content. Happy New Year. Yeah, this is my first one of the year. So happy New Year to everyone. Hey, Zanette, how are you doing? Um, by the way, congrats on winning uh, the Sans Difference Maker Award. That was really, really cool to see, as well as all the other winners. Uh, how's it going? Happy New Year. Thanks, Deshard. I do not know what you're congratulating me for, but thank you. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Hey, Nathaniel. How's it going? Damien, what's good? Damien, how you doing? By the way, you guys should go subscribe to uh, 
Damien's channel. He started a channel recently for uh, the DevSec Blueprint. Um, and Damien is very knowledgeable about, um, you know, what he talks about, DevSecOps. Um, I love those fun things. So definitely go check him out. I subscribe to him on YouTube. Um, he's an amazing guy. Not saying, but you influence me a lot. Going a lot in IT. Cyber is next. Yeah. Join us. Join us. Marcel, what's good, Marcel? Good evening. Good evening. Shadrach, how's it going? Emmanuel, how's it going? Alwyn, great. I also got the CCD last year and what certifications will you do next? Um, CCD is great, by the way. Amazing certification. Um, 48 hours really <laughs> takes you to the deep end. So um, good on you for passing that. Um, what am I doing next? Um, I am going to hopefully be working on the uh, certified, pen uh, not penetration tester, sorry. Uh, the certified defensive security analyst from Hack the Box. Um, I've seen a lot of reviews on that, but I haven't released anyone who's done it, so I want to take it. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. What's good, Kristen? Jason, that's pretty cool. To yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm clicking on them. Um, so I'm using StreamYard to kind of push all of them to these different platforms, and it's doing a great job. Um, so I'm clicking each and each each of these uh, comments. Hey, Andrew. Hello, hello, Endless Learner. That's such a great name. What streaming platform am I using to control the comments from each application? Um, it's it's StreamYard. It does an amazing job of like bringing everything together. Like it just brings all the platform. It helps me stream to all the platforms, but also helps me bring all the platforms together so I can you know do stuff like this, like the comments and everything. It's 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 amazing to say the least. Yeah, it's it's really great, really great stuff. Yeah, like I just said, a StreamYard. Gonna be a big multitasking, but it's looking great already. Yeah, I mean, like for for the platform, it's not even much multitasking, honestly. It just brings everything into the same uh, user interface, so I don't have to move between all the different um, all the different platforms because it just centralizes it for me within StreamYard. So like, it's extremely convenient. Hello, Jose from the Dominican Republic. It was the Azure Fundamentals aiming for sec plus, but yeah, nice, love it. I, I that's I, I haven't seen someone who's like done um, a cloud certification before, like a security certification. It's typically the other way around. So good on you for taking Azure Fundamentals. I guess you've bitten that um, that cloud. Why do I always start like idioms and not finish them? Because I, I keep forgetting what they are. But yeah, that's great. Marlin. How's it going, Marlin? Agile Vampire, quite the name there. First time seeing catching you live, yeah. I haven't been live in a very long time. Now that I do realize it, I haven't been live since second quarter of last year, so it's been a minute since I've been live, but I might be a little bit more consistent uh, this year given that I will be um, doing more technical stuff. Uh, this is one of just like a, I might get into some like, I might get into like a try hack me room tonight, but I'm just trying to test this out and just see how, it, how it's going. I uh, appreciate you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations to Jason who got his cert today. Congratulations, Jason. Great job, man. What's good, Professor Roger? How you doing? Yo, what's good, Justin? Man, I love Justin, man. Amazing guy. How you doing, man? Joseph Holloway, what's the multi-stream service? It's called StreamYard. I, I will post it um, here in a second. And this is not going to be an affiliate link or anything. Just go check out StreamYard.com. Um, that's what it is. What's up, Nathan? How's it going? Hey, how's it going? I'm doing all right. I'm doing very well. Thanks for checking. I am everywhere. <laughs> Everything everywhere all at once. Yes. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess. Kristen Madden, uh, Madison, how's it going? Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks like professor, uh, professor is saying hi to you. Von Jones, yo, how's everyone? I'm sure everyone's doing great. I, I love the chat. It's it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah, StreamYard is great. It's great. What's up, Premier? Man, we've got heavy hitters in the chat. That's really, really awesome. Oh, you're going for the Azure Fundamentals next. Oh, I guess I misunderstood that. Yeah, Azure Fundamentals is a pretty good one. I got that like about two or three years ago. So it's a pretty, pretty good foundational cert to just get you into the world of Azure. Um, yeah. 
Hello, hello. Finally got the office set up. I wonder if like it's someone that I know. I finally did. Oh yeah, from oh you're probably in the Discord. By the way, if you're not in Discord, definitely join the Discord. It's gonna be Discord.gg slash Cyberwax Academy. Definitely join. You see more stuff that you don't see uh, on other on other places. But yeah, I finally got the office set up. If you're in the Discord, you probably saw the setup um, in the setup chat. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, yeah, it's pretty fire. Um, I I spend all of my uh, I spend all the, I'm 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 here all day. Um, um, that's my main work setup, and this is like my um, other setup. Streaming the trihacking room. Yeah, I might do like a basic like Splunk one on one room. Just like do a bit of like you know what is Splunk, whatever the case is. So we might just dive into that. Thank you, thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Was good, Xavier. How you doing, my guy? How you doing? How you doing? How's the new house, man? It's <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, like moving into a house and then like starting a new job at the same time is insane. Like I, the last couple of months have been like so insane. Um, but God's been good, so <laughs> yeah. Maddox, how's it going, man? How's it going? It's been a minute. The frames are fire. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going for a new look this year. Uh, just trying to like, you know, just change things up a little bit. I would say, um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for. But I've been getting like really great compliments about the about the look. It's pretty interesting. I'm not able to see um, any comments from Instagram. Or, oh, I'm not live on Instagram. <laughs> That's hilarious. I just realized that I wasn't live on Instagram. I thought, I was like, oh, what's happening on Instagram? I'm not seeing any comments, but I was not live on Instagram. But it looks like now I'm live on Instagram. So I guess I might start getting Instagram comments now. And uh, okay, cool. Yeah, we should be good on there. Um. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spend the next eight minutes just answering questions in the chat and then we'll just go into the track me room um like the plan with these streams is really to just like do these things live for transparency and also um for uh methodology um like i would go i would be doing these things whatever i'm doing like blind um just so that uh like, because I mean, with the, the recorded stuff is like very easy to look at and be like, oh, like, you know, they did this, they did that. But like, you know, it doesn't really show like the, the process that you go through when you think through a, like a scenario, uh, whatever the case is. So when I'm out, when I'm online, um, I would be, you know, doing these things like live and just show my methodology, whatever I might be struggling through um, as I'm doing these scenarios. But today would just be like a Splunk, a Splunk basics room. In the sense that we're just going to be looking at like basically just Splunk, and I will most likely eventually repurpose it into an actual YouTube video. So like we're killing two birds with one stone. If you stay on the live, then you get to see like the methodology and all of that. Um, and um, afterwards, the live will remain for channel members, but the video, the edited version of the video, will come back to my main YouTube where it has like a lot more production value and uh, longevity. So that's kind of the plan um, right now. So this is sort of like a, a pilot for that. Um, the goal here, again, you know, it's just for that. I'm not really looking too much for engagement in these lives. I'm just looking for, you know, I'm just looking to like, you know, it's kind of a good feeling when you're online um, live and you're able to kind of just, uh, uh, what's it called? You're just able to kind of just like, experience certain things like as you're going through a scenario or whatever like it's, i think it's just pretty cool right um and i think in this day and age where like everyone's essentially like a streamer um of some sort um it'd be nice to like have some more consistent like cybersecurity um streams online that are not just like device focused but more so um uh like technical technical technically oriented um so that's kind of the goal um over the first couple of streams we'll be going over the basics which is why um this particular stream I'm doing right now is called Back to the Basics. Um, so like basic Splunk stuff and then basics of like um, other things. Um, and then we'll start going deeper into other things based on what we've learned in the basics. So you're going to have to kind of follow the journey from where we are 
Um, also in regards to Python, I know a lot of people have been asking about these videos. Um, that's also going to start from the very basics. Um, and I'm still kind of trying to figure out like what's the best way in terms of like both providing like educational value, um, my learning, as well as also making sure that um, I'm not kind of like, you know, ultimately, like I, I said in some of my previous videos, technical videos don't do as well in general, except for a much bigger channel um, as the more advice videos. But I do, I do see their potential and I want to make sure I'm bringing like, you know, both quality um, in terms of like the content in the, like in the te technical sense, as well as um, the value in the video that like, you're able to learn from the video. So that's kind of the approach. So I'm still figuring a lot of things out um, in regards to that, um, because although I am an engineer trying to like, I'm an, an engineer and an educator trying to like teach things, I'm also a content creator as well after those things. And I do have to factor in the algorithm, the audience, the platforms to make sure that all of these things kind of like, you know, have sort of like a holistic feel to them. So it's it's really a lot to think about, but. Um, ultimately, like the goal is to provide value and also like make sure that the platform um, also still stays stays alive. But yeah, um, I really do enjoy like, you know, those kind of videos and I want to do more of them. So going to figure it out. Um, it will take some time, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm also going to need you guys help in terms of um, re 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 when I request like things like polls and like um, trying to understand what works best for you. Um, it would be really great to get your engagement in quest to that so that I can uh, appropriately plan um the things that i the, the the videos and all of those things um in a way that will help you in like, exactly like what you need and also myself in regards to delivering value um so all, yeah we're still figuring it we're still figuring it out um but i think over time like we'll kind of you know figure it out i guess <laughs> but yeah I, I just rambled on there but let me get back to the comments and then we'll we'll hop into this splunk basics room all right where were we Okay, we've got a couple questions. Uh, yes, sir. God is great. Absolutely. No doubt about that. Uh, Dara is saying, I am a senior UX designer that is just started on my journey, providing from UX into clouds. Wow. Okay. And you're the main inspiration. Thanks for all the valuable knowledge. I Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I was, Someone once told me that because I care about, as a security engineer, because I care about uh, UX and UI that I'm going to end up being a product manager, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but it's funny till it happens, right? But yeah, all the best on your on your cloud security journey. You had a video on the best entry-level cybersecurity resume months ago. Would you say, say that's still relevant in 2024? Yes, absolutely. I think um, that is relevant, you know, with the current state of things in, in, in the current uh, cybersecurity um, uh, landscape, I would say, career landscape, I would say. Are you still in the house warranty phase? Yes, 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 I am, I am. So that is very, that's very clutch. <laughs> um, I have my first warranty meeting uh, in, in, a, in a couple of weeks here. So that's very clutch. <laughs> uh, which blue team sir, do you think helped you the most with your career? Biggest bang for, for your buck in your opinion? Ah, man, this is a great question. Okay, what I'm gonna do before I answer this question, I'm gonna extend like answering answering like these comments by another 10 minutes. Um, so we, we get a little bit more um, airtime there. But just a second here. Okay. But to answer your question, um the blue team thread that helped me the most in my career, in my opinion, biggest bag for my buck. Um man, this is actually a thought a thought provoking question. Um I would say Yikes. Uh, man, this is such a, uh, such a thought provoking question. Ah, the best, the only thought that keeps coming back to my mind right now is like the network plus, um, because yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Let me, yeah, let me, let me actually dive, uh, dive into that a little bit. I'll say network plus because I, it really helped me like really hone into networking. And I spent like an inordinate, like a, a too much English. I spent a ridiculous amount of time on trying to really dig deep into networking and really get good at it. While I was studying for the Network Plus, um, I, I passed the exam, but 
I just spent so much time just like really trying to like dig deep into like networking concepts. And I think it has helped me more than anything <laughs> in my career. Like, and I, I say that because a lot of interviews, um, whether at bigger companies or um, at, um, you know, smaller companies, whatever the case is, like all of my interviews that I've had, they always start with like networking of some sort. Right. Um, and that has always, has always like stood out to be one of my strong points. I get a lot of feedback from like recruiters when, you know, after the interview, they're like, we had a really great, um, you know, I had a really good depth in terms of networking. Um, and that's always helped me stand out, um, you know, and help me build my security knowledge on that. Um, so I would say the Network Plus, it's weird to say now, but that would be the one certification. <laughs> yeah, the Network Plus. And I know it's not like a blue team certification, but honestly, that would, that would be the one certification. Has the work, how's the work-life balance now? I mean, I only started um, very recently, um, but so far so good. That's what I say. What's the Discord server again? I got you. It's discordgg cyberwalks academy. The invite to the Discord has expired. That's like an infinite invite. <laughs> Can someone else help me like validate that? Uh, do you have any advice for being in a soccer role where there's limited opportunity for growth and learning and any attempts to take on additional responsibilities are consistently rejected? Simple, leave. <laughs> um, learn, like, um, build, build, build your skills um, way, like, that are more advanced beyond the role you're in and go to a, like, a different role that's going to like help you keep growing um, or, or else like you're just going to stagnate your growth. Um, I'm a very huge advocate for if you're in a role that is stagnating your growth, like you're not able to like keep growing, then obviously it's time for you to like move on to something that if, especially if, if you want to grow, then you have to go find somewhere that's going to help you grow. If you want to just be fine where you're at, which there's nothing wrong with, then you can stay at that role. Right. But obviously you do want to grow. You do want to take on more responsibilities. Um, and if you've shown that you're able to take on those responsibilities and they're not letting you, then definitely want to look for other opportunities. If you, sh if you're not showing that you can take on those responsibilities and they're like, Oh, go build those skills. Um, then that might be up to you to like go build those skills before um, going back to ask for more responsibility. All right. We've got eight more minutes just for context um, with like asking these questions before I hop into this lab. Hey, Michael, uh, feel this. It's only, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything, everything, everything. A beginner, cybersecurity, which would you say is the best BTL1 or CIS plus? Um, BTL1, the blue team level one, like, is in comparison to the CYC plus, um, absolutely, like, way better, in my opinion. In my opinion, like, I don't, I don't see the point in taking the CYC plus when there's a blue team level one. Honestly, just because it's practical, like you, you're not cramming, you're learning practical skills, which I, I would always take over multiple choice. Um, allegedly. <laughs> How does red or blue team cyber differ from cloud security? Um, that, that is. Well, okay, I think the question is worded very, very interestingly, but I would say at, a, at an overall level, cybersecurity is typically divided into the red and the blue team, um, offensive or defensive. Um, I think cloud security is under cybersecurity. So there's like offensive cloud security operations and there's also defensive cloud security operations. So if you're in the offensive side of things, you'll be figuring out how to break into cloud environments or like researching exploits against the cloud environments. If you're in the defensive stuff, you'll be doing more uh, maybe operations, management, uh, incident response, and detection stuff. When do you think you will upload this to YouTube? Either probably next month. Yeah, probably next month. Yeah, because I, I got, I've got like the whole of this month's content planned out. So uh, next month. Yes. I feel like they don't draw engagement because people want to look at the, yeah, at the dream and passion and not the work. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. I have so much more to say about that, but I, I, I agree with that. What's good, Gregory? 
but I think the work and the technical videos are yes, absolutely. Like nothing beats that. Nothing beats that. One hundred percent. Basic fundamental technical videos will do better. Yeah, it's it, it's it's. I agree with that. But that's that's the starting point, right? We have to build from the basics into more advanced stuff, right? Because we can't stay at the basics forever. We can always go back to the basics, but we have to build from the basics. So we can't stay at the basics forever. Um, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's a new journey. We're on it together. Um, just help me out here. Just really help me out here. Um, if you really are passionate about this content, then help me out by watching the videos, sharing them, um, commenting in them, um, liking them. For one, it, it, it recommends those videos to people who will watch them and find value in them. And given that I get a good amount of engagement with that, it gives me more incentive to want to do those videos, right? If if a day in the life video is doing way better than a technical video, as a content creator, right? Aside from being an engineer and an educator, it's harder for me to justify um, the process of continuously making the technical videos. So I do need your support and your help in regards to making those videos worthwhile, right? If I have like, if I have for me, here's my here's my thing, right? My 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 yardstick of success for a technical video, in terms of success, personally, if I get one thousand views, and on that video within the first seven to fourteen days, that is success to me. That is success to me because I know it will it will grow over time. So if I get one thousand people out of the thirty one thousand people who follow me to watch those videos and actually like, you know, like them, comment, um, challenge me, like challenge my, my, my process, right? It helps, right? So I do need you guys to engage. And I, I am, I'm not gonna just be asking you guys for this, right? I'm gonna give you a reason to do that by giving you the quality content. So that's my promise. So I hope you guys also hold your end of disagreement, right? Because if I'm, if I'm bringing you the content that I know that we both need, right? I would really need you to help me make that content worthwhile. So if you have an agreement, then I will make the effort to make sure that um, I deliver that to you. What monitor is, is that that you have? Behind me, I have a Viotech um, 49 inch. <laughs> Tay is asking me where I live. Um, where do I live? That's a great question. Where do we live? Where am I? Who am I? <laughs> uh, I actually have a question of whether UX principles can be matched with CloudSec. I'm trying to figure out how to learn in public, and whether any of my UX skills are transfer burden. So how? Um, quite honestly, I don't really have much understanding of like UX. Like in its practicality, I just love nice. <laughs> I have I love nice user interfaces and user experiences. So that's as far as my knowledge goes. All right, number one, how long do you study for certifications on average, say the number plus? Okay, I'll preface this by saying like, this is not a yardstick for your timeline for certifications, but when I studied for the number plus, it took me just a little over 30 days, maybe, yeah, just around that. I have a video about that, I forgot how long it took me, but it's around 30 days, I would say, um, either 30 days or six weeks, I don't remember correctly, because it's been um, like four years now, but yeah, just around that amount of time. Um, but it could take you way longer. I, I was coming from the A plus. I, it was in the pandemic. I was studying all day for long periods of time. And um, I had also previously, right, I think a good amount of context is really good. I'd also previously done a network plus class in my college. I'd also done a CCNA class in my college. So I've had, I'd had like almost a year's worth of like semester college based classes covering networking so <laughs> i spent like way much time like really studying networking and then that's when i took the network plus like you know about a year later so it was much faster than me i just used the discord invite link yeah exactly 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 all right do you think any advice for someone do you have any advice for someone who's trying to get their first talk or security role after use a sequel so I, I i was having a conversation with my friend um earlier and he works in, in 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 the in the data uh world of things and 
I was like, you do realize that your skills as a, you know, in, in, in this field of data actually transfer into cybersecurity. Um, because in the world of cybersecurity, in every industry, there's data to be analyzed, right? Every single system has some sort of telemetry that it, it generates, right? Almost everything that, that almost every single technological system generates some sort of telemetry. And that telemetry goes somewhere, right? And sometimes, right, overall, like let's just look at data from a high level. Data is typically used for like business intelligence, making decisions, all of that. But we also can't find a lot of security context within that data, right? So you having like experience with like SQL development could be a good transition into like something like a SOC role, right? Where you're doing like SIM engineering, right? Maybe managing like the back end of a SIM. Or you could even work maybe at a at a, a sim company or like a a company that does like security, but like security data analytics, right? I think trying to translate your previous experience into cybersecurity is easy if you know how those skills apply into these different roles. Now, obviously, like you have to learn the cybersecurity skills, the cybersecurity knowledge, and the cybersecurity concepts to apply the skills from your previous role into the cybersecurity role. Um, so that that way you're 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 bringing these two worlds together, your data SQL development world, and then a new cybersecurity world that you're going to be building as you learn. And when they collide, like Oppenheimer, <laughs> what would be good? What would be some good tools to learn after I get into Security Plus? So my answer to this question is: don't focus too much on tools. Focus to focus more on methodology because tools are dispensable, right? Um, you might feel like, oh, you know, learn Splunk. We're, we're going to do a Splunk lab here in a bit. But like some companies really build their own internal like security data lakes um, and they don't use Splunk. They just create like Snowflake or something. I don't know. But like it's the same. If you're looking for Windows event logs, like let's say for an authentication activity, the query you you'd use in Splunk is obviously slightly different from what you'd use from like I don't know, like a Snowflake database, but you're still essentially querying for the same thing, right? So focus on skills and methodology over tools. But if you want to get hired, um, learn the tools like, um, uh, like learn some tools, like get some knowledge or some tools, like let's say like, like Splunk. <laughs> Back to Splunk, I guess. Where do we ask questions? <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Okay, I don't I don't mean to be disrespectful, but like you just asked a question, like literally. So I guess wherever you're asking this question from, I guess. <laughs> if you're on LinkedIn, you just I guess, oh, I think because you commented. I think because you commented. So yeah, the comment that you make is literally the quite is literally like where you're asking the questions from. So yeah, that's 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 your answer there. Any advice to get an internship in my junior year? Uh, I'm a bit biased here, I'd say, because I got my first internship um, just, yeah, while I was still a freshman, like right before I finished freshman year of college. I'd say I started looking for internships like from like first semester, not gonna lie. Like I'd been, I'd been, I've been trying to find out like what do I need to do to get an internship by the end of the year. So that involved me taking the right classes, learning the right skills, doing the right labs um and all those things so by the time that it, it came to start interviewing for these internships and for these different roles i think i was i had had like a, a whole year of failures <laughs> that i could uh, apply and you know really uh use to get those roles so you might it might take you some time like it took me i would say it took me like a year of preparation uh learning skills and um building skills and um you know uh figuring out how to interview for getting that internship but like that was weird because i started literally the first semester of college on um, my freshman year. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. So um, yeah, I would also say taking relevant certifications. Um, so I've taken the A plus, I was almost done with the never plus um, by the time I was interviewing for my internship. And um, I was already, already doing labs and stuff like that. Um, I took really relevant coursework. And I imagine if we're a junior right now, you would have taken a good amount of coursework that is related to cybersecurity. Um, so there's that, um, yeah, 
that's what worked for me. Um, I think if you figure out a way to translate that into your experience, um, you could probably make something shake. Uh, I think it's the one that you need for your job. Um, I would say like Python is pretty ubiqu ubiquitous. Um, Go is also another one. Um, and then JavaScript as well. Um, there's three. Um, I'll say start with Python, um, then choose either Go or JavaScript, and then learn a third one. Right now, my focus is on Python. Um, I do eventually want to uh, learn Go um, and get better at JavaScript. <sighs> Basics are at the top of the funnel. Technical videos are mid-funnel. People who actually put in the work. People who are interested. Oh, I see. That actually makes sense. That actually makes sense, right? So we pull in people. So yeah, that actually makes sense. So with the basics in terms of like technical videos, right? It's like we give you like a taste of, you know, what it is that we're doing. And then with the um, the actual technical videos, like maybe a lot more uh, advanced, we're pulling in a different kind of audience. I, I do agree with that. Like when I, I, I was still making my cloud videos, which I've unfortunately had a, a takedown recently, I was getting that sort of like, you know, uh, audience into the channel, which was great. Um, and then the basic ones brought those other people. So I, 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 I can see what you're saying there. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see how we'll make it work. Uh, we'll see how we'll make it work. Yes. Yes. Please hit the like button. Um, not really trying to get any amount of people into the stream like that. Um, I just hear that people who are here are, um, engaging. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, hit that like button, please. Thank you. Hey, I'd like to become a detection security engineer. Do a lot of Splunk. I could figure Splunk's premium application. Are there any certifications you'd recommend? Um, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm getting. I don't know. I get the certification questions like a lot, but I guess you know it's hard to escape them because I take a lot of certifications myself. Um. Well, Splunk in my company, I figure. I mean, if you're configuring Splunk, aren't you already a security engineer? Well, I'll just say this. The best advice I can give you is like beyond just like Splunk or anything. Like, I really do hope that you do understand like the threats, um, the exploits and vulnerabilities that you're, um, that you're going to be using Splunk for, because if you don't understand that, like you're just a sim engineer, not a de detection engineer. If you want to become a detection engineer who also has some understanding of like, you know, sim configuration, you do have to understand like the tactics, um, techniques and procedures that the attackers actually use against your environment or your industry, and then apply that into your knowledge of the sim. So you can actually like build the detection rules or configurations or log parsers that will accurately detect those things. So that first, and then maybe go get a bunch of Splunk certifications, but that first, skills. Yes, I I have two standing desks. There's one right in front of me, there's one behind me. This one I believe is from Vizio, I believe, but I, I would really love to change it. It's it's pretty old and it's like, you see that? It's like pretty wonky, um, it, it's, it's big as well. So. I'd love to change it. The one behind me is like another one. This is like, I think this one's like 60 or something or 73 inches. That one behind me is like uh, 40 or something. Um, they're both standing desks. I don't know what that one is from, but yeah, I'd really love um, to change this one. Um, I can't really recommend this one per se. The one behind me, I would probably recommend it because it it's pretty good, but I don't remember what the name was. I just found it on Amazon. Bug bounty? No. I mean, at least not right to now, but it is something I would like... If I ever like retire, like say in the next like ten years or something, like I just like spend my time learning how to do bug bounty so I can make money, <laughs> make money in retirement. I don't get enough steps when working from home. Um, <laughs> it's, like take a walk. <laughs> uh, I just let me just like like stand up every every hour or something. I I probably don't get enough steps myself, so I'm probably the wrong person to. Ask, but I, I work out pretty um I work out pretty uh 
consistently. Like I've worked out four times this week. Yeah, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> um, my wife just passed. Like, I, th I think you meant to say Network Plus. Uh, took a two week class in the military. Wow, T two weeks is that is very fast. That's very fast. But congrats to your wife. Oh man, I did the thing, bro. I did the thing. I did the thing, bro. This went from 20 minutes and now we're at, we're at 40 minutes. I've been answering questions for 40 minutes. I oh my goodness. I literally just like I oh my goodness. I said I was going to stop at like 30 minutes and it's 40 minutes. Of, oh my goodness. I can't let this keep happening. Uh ah. Uh, all right, all right, let's listen. Let's, let's. The questions just keep coming. Oh my goodness. I thought I, I thought this was going to be different. I was like, I'm gonna come on here, we're gonna ask a couple questions, and we're just gonna dive right into, into the trying room. And I'll spend the last 40 minutes answering questions. Uh why do I feel like this is how it's going to be all the time? I don't want it to be that way. I need to figure out a good mechanism for this. Um yeah, okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, 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 okay. Elastic and log enumeration all need a pretty graph storage filtering process. Yeah, I think this applies back to like the, the SQL question, I think. I don't think you need a year for Network Plus, but a month is fine. I did, I didn't, I didn't say that you need a year for Network Plus. I didn't say that. I just said I had a year of experience learning networking in my college classes. And then when I eventually got to the point of learning Network Plus, it took me just about a month to pass it. And I also had a plus um yeah but good point <sighs> i've heard everything about cyber adrenaline um easily adrenaline uh i get a lot of adrenaline from like dang something caught me i get a lot of adrenaline from just like stuff that i do <laughs> yeah a lot of adrenaline but i'll also be say behind that um i think sometimes is, is it's very easy to forget that we we have like literal humans behind what we're doing um in the sense that in cybersecurity there's like critical infrastructure beyond what we're doing there's like health data beyond what we're doing there's like financial data like people's literal life savings or retirement um with health data people's literally like health records um you know their their identity their dnas maybe uh or dna data um like you know critical infrastructure or right? government infrastructure there's a lot behind what we do that sometimes it's so easy for us to like reduce what we do to just a job or just a career um and i think for me like the adrenaline the adrenaline i get is like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna chase down this guy that stole someone else's life savings right by causing like ransomware right and then figuring out how they did it so that they can they never they never are able to do it again you know what i mean um like we're ultimately on the good side. And um I think I just get that rush from like, okay, like I'm 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 what I'm doing is like a net positive to to the world. So yeah. Figuring out the logs to monitor raw like event viewer log files across the various systems. Figuring out the I mean I guess you're talking about oh 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 the the sim. Okay. It'll be easy like to like maybe at the person you're responding to so that that way, like we know like what you're referring to, right? Cause like this just, if I didn't really know the context, I would think this was like a random comment, but good point though. How do you approach creating a detection for a unique use case in your frame of thinking when creating rules around it? This is a great question. Um, well, I don't know. I no longer work as a detection engineer, but let me see if I can show you like, uh, something here real quick. Um, I was thinking about something. What was it? It was, um, it was, uh, Federation. Yeah. Federation in AWS. Uh, I technically cannot talk about that, but let's just do a high level, um, high level overview. Um, creating a detection for a unique case in your frame of thinking. When creating, okay. So when I'm creating a detection for you, when I was creating a detection for a unique case, um, what I'll do is I first have to understand, I classify like building detections in my own head, like my framework is like the system, the telemetry and the actor. So 
the system is okay what is this detection the, the what is what infrastructure operating system environment is this detection being built for um the telemetry what telemetry is available from this um device you know cloud whatever the case is that i can use for the detection and then finally is the actor like what is the actor trying to do um in terms of exploiting this device um, what is their aim how do they do it and what do their actions show within the telemetry that's been shown from the device system whatever the case may be so that's where it starts from i think if you understand those three things very well then you can approach your detection um building or detection development um easily Blas, it was targets yes 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 um labs and projects I, I can't emphasize labs and projects or 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 hear me out it seems as though you've only done um multiple choice certification so far try a practical certification i promise you you you, you can't get tired of those try the bulletin level one try the ccd try the cdsa try just try just try a practical certification and it, I, I think it will be worth your while CHC or your next level. Whatever your whatever you can afford between CDSA from Hack the Box, Bluetooth Level One, and the CCD, whatever you can afford. A version or advanced version of you. Like <laughs> what? Can I replicate a version or advanced version of me? Like in terms of knowledge? That's actually a good question. Um, I think that's gonna point maybe a little bit to mentorship. Like, can I recreate myself? Um I don't know. I like to. I like to like. I'm. 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 I've been recently starting to like, wanted to transcend myself from myself, and I'll explain this. Like, if you notice, like I recently, I well, recently was like in the summer of last year, I changed my my channel name from Day Cyberwalks to just Cyberwalks, and that was because I was trying to abstract myself away from. This really hurts. I'm trying to abstract myself away from the channel because I wanted to be behind something. Greater than, greater than myself so rather than it being like me you know i might have another channel that might be you know day spring johnson but i wanted cyberwalks to be like a thing and not like me in the sense that cyberwalks is like on a mission to do something like this is what we're going to be doing cyberwalks and it's not about me it's about the mission that we're trying to do with cyberwalks um and i think with that like you know we can reach a lot of people in terms of like you know building cybersecurity skills and all of that um but my, myself i don't know i don't know i think maybe when i get to the point where um i i feel comfortable like actually like mentoring like in a in a way that's like fully immersive uh the way i've received mentorship uh, in my career i think that's you know probably when maybe i could create create a, a version of myself so to, and, and so to say <clears throat> it's not frowned upon um it's not frowned upon um if you can afford it I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I would just say like, you know, what are the options do you have? Um, and also like in terms of affordability and stuff like that. You want a digital forensics? Penetration testing, concentration, master's degree. Is it worth it? Um, I don't know if it's worth it. I just think you should evaluate, um, evaluate the degree and evaluate the other possibilities that might be more affordable than a degree. But if you really want to want a master's degree, go for it. Like I have nothing against them. And I don't think the industry frowns upon them. The industry just frowns upon people that don't have like knowledge that they claim to have. So, yeah. I also got some comments in in um in Instagram. I can't see the Instagram comments in in Streamyard, but <laughs> so I'm, I'm everywhere. Uh, I don't have a Twitch account, but I might create one. I don't know. Man, too many platforms, man. Yeah, honestly, I'd say like, yeah, pull up to either YouTube or um, YouTube or yeah, go, come to either YouTube or Twitter or LinkedIn so you can comment because like, I don't want to um, like move between platforms like that, that. It makes it easier, easier that way. So I would appreciate that. How much does networking apply with people matter? How much does networking with people matter when applying for jobs? There's a large barrier to entry for many people who are less than five years of experience in the field right now. Would you suggest networking as one of the best ways to get interviews? Um, this is this is a great question. 
Um, okay, here's here's what it is. Here's what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. I'll, uh, these questions are really good. This these questions are really good. Okay, I want to get into the lab. Let's see what we can do in the next ten minutes. Okay, all right. But so, um, when applying for jobs, here's the here's the big thing with networking in terms of applying for jobs. If you network, I guess the right way, and you have the right network, you really don't have to apply for jobs ultimately. For my last couple of roles, I didn't really have to apply to them because I got someone reached out to me for them. And, you know, they're like, hey, you know, you have these skills and all, all that. And you know, they referred me. And, you know, of course, like, you still have to interview and, like, you know, prove that you have the skill with an interview. My current role, I wouldn't say networking, uh, networking like, helped me get my, my current role. Like, I, I got reached out to um, by a recruiter. So I didn't, I mean, I I know a lot of people at my current role, like a, a ton of people in my current role, but I didn't reach out to anyone, no one reached out to me. So, you know, it's kind of different. Um, I think that networking is not the way people kind of make it out to be in the sense that, oh, go for like a cybersecurity conference and like reach out to a bunch of people. Like, I think that comes at, comes of as disingenuine. Right. Like it's like you're trying to get close to people just because you want something out of them. And you don't ever want that. Nobody wants to feel like they're not around a leech. I think if you just provide value to people or to the community, networking just occurs naturally. Like you, you don't even, it doesn't even become networking anyways. Like it just you just connect with people who also appreciate the value that you're bringing. Right. You don't have to become a content creator to like network or anything like that. Like just provide value in some way, right? Maybe like if you go to, a, like go give a talk at a conference, that that is networking, right? Like if you go to a conference and you give a talk about something that you know how to do or something that you learned, people will most likely come come to you after the talk and like, hey, like, you know, I really liked your talk about this. That's another contact you just earned. You connect on LinkedIn um, and that's it. That, that is networking. Networking is not like, you know, which is not a random people. I think networking is just about, providing value in some way and people just notice that like if you're providing if you're genuinely providing value people just notice it and like they actually want to like you know have you around them whether it's like with with jobs or even you know connect with connect you with other people who might you know be willing to like you know give you an interview or whatever the case is and it doesn't stop at that you do have to show that you have the skills within the interview right i've had um cases in the past where um, someone referred me for, for particularly, this was like two, year, two years ago, so I feel like I can talk about it now. But two years ago, I had someone who referred me for a role at CrowdStrike. I was still very early in my career, so like, I'm still very early in my career right now, but I was still very really early in my career, so I wasn't fully qualified for that role. Um, but I, the only reason why I was able to interview for that role was because, you know, networking, right? Um, you know, they thought I would be a good fit. Um, and that was only because from of what I'd been sharing on, you know, online, right? Not even in, in the context of content creation, just like providing value, like sharing educational content, showing what I know how to do. And, you know, I got the opportunity to interview at, at CrowdStrike, but I never got the job. But still, like, that's a door that was open for me, right? Um, so, you know, don't be disingenuous about it. Like, just genuinely have the mind of providing value. And honestly, like, it would take you way further, right? People know when you're faking things or like you're doing things out of obligation or doing things just like maybe this will help me, you know, get something because you're not going to be consistent with it, right? It's so obvious when like you're only doing it for the sake of like maybe just to get a job. And people, people, I think people, people catch on to that and they can see through that facade you're putting up. If you genuinely, you know, want to take the networking approach, then like do it genuinely, right? Um, that's that's kind of my uh, my my spiel about it, um, and if not, build the skills right. Like, take the right certifications and just apply to jobs right. Network is not the only way to cybersecurity. I've also gotten like job interviews without having to like network or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, and yeah, it's not one of the best ways. There are several other ways, 
right? If that if it's one of the best ways, then nobody else would be getting jobs, right? Like I wouldn't have my current job, right? So I was swapped that that i7 for the for the M1 i7. I'm kind of confused, but thank you. Uh, when it comes to education and cybersecurity, would you say college gives you the most your current colleagues have degrees? Okay, this is kind of a weird one in the sense that I didn't have a degree when I was starting my my first couple of roles, and it has never really been a point in my interviews. Or maybe it might helped. It might have helped in my in my resume. But when I first started, I didn't really have a degree. I only just got my 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 degree like um late last. Well, sorry. That's so crazy because now I, I can say I got my degree in 2022. <laughs> That's insane. But um, because now we're in 2024. But um, yeah, like I don't think education. Okay, education. You can't completely rule out education, but if you have skills and experience, they outweigh education, in my opinion, in my experience. It could be different in some other cases, but I think the reason why it could help is because it just adds point, right? It just adds extra point. You know, like. Extra credit just kind of helps you a little bit, like just pushes you a little bit. The extra credit could push you from a 80, sorry, from like an 89 to a 92. That's an A, right? You know what I mean? So it could just be the extra credit. Um, but then again, it's like if you already have a 95, right? The extra two points from the extra credit probably doesn't make much of a difference if it's still on an A scale, right? So I just think that, you know, just evaluate where you are and see if you really need that extra credit, which is having a college degree. He is risky. So you're never going to, yeah, it is. The cloud videos you that we're taking down, can we, what's the mouse where, why are you taking down? So they're private now, um, simply because they exist as a conflict of interest with my current employer, obviously, because they were all AWS-based videos. Um, so they're going to be private for as long as I am at Amazon. Uh, that's the best answer I can give you for that. Best way to showcase your practical skills learned on paper. Portfolio, like your portfolio, like document whatever you did on, on, on GitHub or in a blog and put them on your resume. I have a video about this. <sighs> How can someone know the threats? Research. You, you learn them. You research them. You go on, you read books. You watch videos, you do labs, you take courses that teach you them, you learn them, like you research them. <laughs> go outside, yeah. Go take a work, go take a walk. Uh, I'm a gym, <laughs> yeah, gym member, yeah, gym membership, yeah. Absolutely, can't go wrong with that. Would you recommend learning Splunk? I mean, if it's relevant for what you wanna do, yes. What's the best way to keep up with the new threats and vulnerabilities along with those patches, only one place, is there any app? Um, I think I don't think you can keep up with everything. I I I, I kind of have a balance between like, um. So we have a we have a, a a bot in the Discord that gives us um, uh, what's it called? That gives us a like a daily feed of security news. Um, shout out to Xavier for building that out. Um, and so I look at that a lot. Um, there's a bunch of like new security news that helps me stay up to date. Um, and then also Twitter as well. Um, and I just and also, like, uh, I, I subscribe to a bunch of cybersecurity channels. You, you're, you're gonna have to, like, you're gonna have to figure out a way. Like, here's the thing: like, if you, if you have a problem, figure out a solution to the problem, right? Um, and then over time, like, the problem just starts solving itself. So, join a Discord if you want to be part of the community and also um, have access to um, that um, security news um, feed because it just like automatically comes in every single day. <sighs> uh, I do, I do the thing. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I did it again. Oh my goodness. I did it again. I spent the last one hour. Oh, oh. here's what's going to happen. All right. This is not going to happen again. The next time I come on, I'm going to have the try hack me room all ready to go. And we're just going to dive right into it. Like, I'm not going to let this happen again. Oh my goodness. I said, oh my goodness. I literally said that I wasn't going to do this. And I did it. Oh, dang. I was like, today I'm in business. I'm in business and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I kind of feel bad about it. I, I actually do feel bad about, bad, about, bad about it. But I guess like there is some value to this. All right. Uh, would you recommend once this? Oh, sorry. 
Could you please um rephrase that question? Do you want to buy a walking pad? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how people do it. Like, how do you manage like walking and typing? I don't think that's really realistic. Maybe I've just not tried it, but yeah. Pomodoro. Yeah, Pomodoro is pretty good. I use Pomodoro. As long as a phone work for me. Yeah, I, I use my watch, so I just like turn like well. I don't have alarms on there for it, but I just consciously like just stand up and I have a standing desk. So, and I, I work out. So like, yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to be very specific about the questions. I, I, um, I pick now. What are the, some, what are some interview tips that you have to break into Fang? Ooh, you got to understand the company you're interviewing for. Um, experience plays a lot. Experience, experience, plays a lot in terms of being able to like articulate things you've done in the past that relate to the questions you're being asked. Um, and then just strong understanding of the fundamentals. Like you can't skip on that. Um, you can you cannot skip on that. Um, also um, making sure that you practice like some like scripting and automation, like um, yeah, like there's a lot, it really depends on the company. Big, big brothers watch it. How do you what do you mean to see? The CDSA is the certified defensive security analyst from Actibox. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh best path against cyber to cloud security. You know what? I actually made a video about that. So I'm gonna drop that video in the chat. But there is no best path. There is no best path. There are optimal paths, but there is no best path. I'm going to send you that video about cloud security um, because I do think and I have a video coming up, coming up about this. Like there is no best path into anything like this is the best way to do it. No, that's you imposing your beliefs on other people. Everyone's different. But all right, let me pick a couple of questions and then we get into the lab. Uh, so you're playing any for you about the coming interests are at work. Uh, hi, humans. Uh, let me see. Hello, oh, it's a network on LinkedIn, but a VPN. <laughs> this is hilarious. Thank you, thank you. If the government pays me a lot of money, of course, I'm a patriot, I'm a patriotic American. <laughs> If you look at my LinkedIn, I'm no I'm longer a detection engineer. I had a conversation about it. Um, honestly, nothing. <laughs> it's hilarious, but I've just really honestly, honestly, to be honest, most I've spent my time studying for right now is Python. Like I've been spending like I've just spent like almost at least like 30 to one, one hour a day just like working on my Python skills. That really is like what I've been doing. <laughs> very true, very true, very true, very true, very true, very true. All the best. All right, all right, all right. This is this is this is this is this is it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is this is it. We made it to the we made it to the end. We made it to the end. I, I'm gonna leave all the comments alone. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. All right, let's let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. So I'm gonna share my screen and uh, Splunk basics. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's learn some Splunk basics. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I know you guys know Splunk. Okay, I I get it. Like you already know how to do use Splunk and all of that. So be patient with me <laughs> with this. I haven't used Splunk in a long time. Um. So let's go back to the basics with Splunk. Uh, again, I know some of you guys are already familiar with Splunk, but you know we've got some new folks who might ben benefit from this. All right, so I hope you guys can see this. I think this is. I hope this is good. I hope the view is nice. This is my view. What's your view like? Anyways, so introduction. Splunk is one of the leading seam solutions in the market that provides the ability to collect, analyze, and correlate the network and machine logs in real time. And in this room, we'll explore the basics of Splunk and its functionalities and how it provides better visibility of network activities and help in speeding up detection. You know, like, actually, 
in the real sense of it, Splunk was actually made to be a, a data analytics tool, not a security tool. And then they were like, oh, we can make so much money from doing security stuff, you know. And then they 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 be, it became it became a security tool, a sim. But yeah, that's so crazy. And that also points back to the fact that a lot of data analytical sort of like domains apply very much to security. All right, so let's get to the next stage of things. So we're gonna look at Splunk overview, uh, the components, different ways to ingest logs, and then normalization of logs. This is very, um, I think this is less like security oriented, well not security oriented, this is more of like, this is very good to learn if you're going to be a detection engineer in the sense that you're gonna be doing a lot with like um, architecture of your SIM and also ingest ingestion of logs and normalization of logs beyond just like the security knowledge, being able to like kind of configure the platform in a way that helps you do your detection well is actually really important. So let's go ahead and connect connect with the lab. Before moving forward, deploy the machine. When you deploy the machine, it will be assigned an IP. Access the Firmino web server on the attack box or via a VPN. We'll do the attack box. Maybe we should have some music, All right? Music? Music? Music, maybe? Let's try this. It's about to be corny. No. Are y'all feeling this? <laughs> Let me know. If not, I'll just turn on the music. Okay, okay, okay. No. Mm, that's it's got some minor stuff in it. it could be a bit distracting. It's probably the one. No. Okay. All right. Let's do this one. I know I'm worried about the wrong things right now, but I promise if we get this all set up today, the next time we stream, like it will be so much better. All right, we'll, cool. we'll do this one. Let's go ahead and get into this room. I'm gonna turn, turn down the music a little bit just because I don't want it to be distracted. All right, let me know if the music got distracted and we we'll just turn it off. All right, the machine is started. Um, let's access it. Task included deployable machine, start machine. Um, why, why, I thought it was started already. All right, um, I'm gonna just make the attack box, um, but whenever it loads up. But let's get started on the other side of things here. Where do you did this? So, all right, let's get started with the Splunk components. So Splunk has like a little moving pieces um, within it. Um, let me see if I'm not too big here. All right, so Splunk has three main components, namely the forwarder, the indexer, and the search head. These components I explained below. And I think, well, before we actually go into these different components, I think it's important to highlight like why why is it like so complex? I, I would, uh, like I guess in, in this sense, in the terms of having an indexer, a search head, and a forwarder, I think because when you're dealing with a large amount of data, it's very important to like decouple the systems that store the data, um, that process the data. Actually, first the system that send the data, that store the data, and then the system that retrieve the data. Because if you have everything just like all in like a single system that's like a single point of failure but if it's decoupled right in the sense that there are different aspects to it um then you know like it's not a single point of failure in that sense that's how i think that's why that's why i think there's like different um there's different aspects of it because ultimately if it's just one single system there might actually even be a, like way too 
resource intensive in, in general, right? And if you're a Splunk, you know, kind of person in the chat, like just let me know, like if I'm thinking about it the wrong way, but that's what I think. Ultimately, the Splunk Florida is a lightweight agent uh, that's installed on an endpoint intended to be monitored. And its main task is to collect the data and send it to the Splunk instance. It does not affect the endpoint's performance as it takes very few resources to process. Some of the key data sources are web server generating web traffic, Windows machine generating Windows event logs, PowerShell. And by the way, if you're not familiar with PowerShell, uh, PowerShell is a task automation and configuration management program from Microsoft consistent of a command line shell and the associated scripting language. Basically, it's a powerful shell. It's a powerful, um, you know, language you can use for a lot of really, really amazing things within within Windows. And then, of, of course, Sysmon data. Now, Linux hosts generating host-centric logs. Um, not familiar with Linux. Uh, Linux is a command line operating system based on Unix, and there are multiple operating systems that are based on Linux. And then finally, you have the database. Okay. Finally, you have the database generating DB connections, requests, responses, and errors. So this is not the limitation that you have with Splunk. Uh, obviously, you can also like uh, monitor your cloud data with Splunk, or you can monitor a bunch of different things with Splunk. As a matter of fact, when I started learning about Splunk, uh, when I got my uh, my core user like a couple years ago, initially, a lot of what was being analyzed with Splunk was like IoT, IoT device data, right? So even those small systems, like those systems that might seem is insignificant, do have their telemetry that they, that they generate. And Splunk is a good way by which you can actually aggregate, search, uh, store the telemetry, um, you know, to find context within it for whatever the case may be. And we have this really nice sort of a diagram here. So showing like Linux telemetry, showing uh, Windows telemetry, maybe some some web telemetry, some database telemetry, and even your, your your Apple telemetry as well, like where that's like your your Macs, right? Um, uh, if you're familiar with like detection engineering, there's a there's a whole subset of like you know uh, uh, researching Mac based threats because there's a lot of organizations that use Macs, so understand how to like you know send that data maybe to Splunk and also like utilize that data for like detection use cases is also important as well. No one's left out. All right. So we just went over what the Florida is, right? The Florida essentially forwards data, moves data from the endpoint into the Splunk system or uh, your Splunk instance. The indexer. So the indexer plays the main role in processing the data. It receives from, oh, let me just say that again. The Splunk indexer plays the main role in processing the data it receives from the forwarders. It takes the data, normalizes it into field value pairs, determines the data type of the data and stores them as events. Process data is easy to search and analyze. So when the forwarder sends data into your Splunk system, the Splunk indexer essentially processes that data that is received from the forwarder. And then it normalizes that data into field value pairs, um, essentially like those different um, attributes, which we'll probably see later on in the video, um, uh, that categorize you know, the, the key and the value. Um, and then it determines the data type and then stores it as events uh, within your Splunk instance. And that process data is easy to search and analyze. And in, in normal like database terms, this is what you, you would categorize or term as ETL, basically extract, transform, and load. So basically what the indexer does is, you know, all that ETL sort of uh, things. All right, the search head. So... The search head is the place within the search and reporting app where users can search the indexed logs as shown below. So in here, you can see the user is searching for index equals main. And I think we'll go over what an index means later on. When the user searches for a term or uses a search language known as Splunk Search Processing Language, which is SPL, the request is sent to the indexer and the relevant events are returned in the form of field value peers. Now field value peers is kind of throwing me off because I'm more familiar with key value peers. So let's see what's field value peers. So a name value also called an attribute value pair, key value pair. Okay, because I was like, I'm familiar with key value, but like uh, field value is like, uh, it's, it's a new term to me, um, but I guess it means the same thing as, as a key value pair. Um, so essentially the search ed is the place where 
you actually retrieve the data that has been normalized by the indexer. So essentially you make a request to the indexer um, and the relevant events are returned in form of the field value pairs. So the search head also provides the ability to transform the results into presentable tables, visualizations like pie charts, bar charts, and column charts as shown below. All of this still points back to like data analysis, right? Like at the fundamentals of what we're doing, like we're analyzing data, right? And we're visualizing this data in terms of like tables, uh, pie charts, bar charts, and column charts. So there's a lot of overlap with like security analytics and data analytics because it's like, it's just security data analytics um, in some sense. And you can see here, there's various possibilities here. You have like uh, these like time series, these uh, bar graphs, uh, pie charts, um, and all these different, you know, even geo geographical charts and all those things, right? Measurements, like there's a lot of possibilities with the visualizations uh, in Splunk. All right, so the first question here is, which component is used to collect and send data over the over over, this should be over to the Splunk instance. Uh, this is going to be the forwarder. All right, let's go ahead and look into navigating Splunk. All right, so the Splunk bar, this is where you access Splunk and you will see the default home screen identical to the screenshot below. We're going to take a look at this uh, when we log into Splunk, but this is the default home screen. I'm sure this is probably given like some suck analyst PTSD right now. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is essentially the, the default Splunk home screen. Let's look at each section or panel that makes up the home screen. The top panel is the Splunk bar. So this is the Splunk bar. Of course, you have Splunk Enterprise. You have the messages you have, the settings, the activity, help, and then find. In the Splunk bar, you can see system level messages, which is the messages. Uh, you can configure the Splunk instance in the settings. You can review the progress of jobs in the activity and then miscellaneous rephrase and then miscellaneous information such as tutorials. You can find that in help and a search feature in find. By the way, if you hear me say rephrase, it's kind of like a, a thing that I'm so used to when I'm making videos um, so that uh, when my editor is processing these videos, um, they can easily just take the good part out of it. So don't think I'm just like saying random stuff. It just helps with, with the editing uh, eventually. So. Moving on, the ability to switch between installed Splunk apps instead of using the apps panel can be achieved from the Splunk bar, like in the image below. So I think the initial that we have here is like Splunk Enterprise and then app search and reporting, which I believe is like where you essentially, yeah, start from right, right here. Search and reporting and the other apps that you have within your Splunk uh, instance. So the apps panel, uh, in this panel, you can see the apps installed for the Splunk instance. And the default app for every Splunk installation is the search and reporting. So this comes by default with uh, Splunk. The next section is Explore Splunk. This panel contains quick links to add to the... Rephrase. This panel contains quick links to add data to the Splunk instance, add new Splunk apps, and access the Splunk documentation. It's pretty straightforward here. So you can add data. Um, this is actually cool if you're doing like CTFs or you're um, getting like a CSV data source from like a, I don't know, like some other platform and you want to like throw it, throw it into Splunk for like ad hoc analysis. Um, you can also do like the Splunk apps. Um, you can add-ons, Splunk calls them apps and add-ons. Uh, and then the Splunk documentation, which is pretty comprehensive. All right, Splunk dashboard. The last section is the home dashboard. So by default, no dashboards are displayed. You can choose from a range of dashboards readily available within your Splunk instance. You can select the dashboard from the drop-down menu or by visiting the dashboards listing page. Let's look at what that looks like. So choose a home dashboard and then you can choose the default dashboard. There's a bunch of default dashboards. These are typically called out of the box dashboards. I built a ton of them while I was at Datadog. Um, and you have a bunch of dashboards here. These are just default dashboards, right? Um, so you might have to like build your own dashboards for your own configurations. You can also create dashboards and add them to the home dashboard. The dashboards you create can be viewed isolated from the other dashboards by clicking on the yours tab. Please review the Splunk documentation on navigating Splunk here. All right, so 
Splunk documentation. Please always read the docs. The docs are like a great place for information. Sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're not. But this is just a good overview of navigating Splunk. This does actually seem like the old Splunk. I'm not even gonna lie. Like this is like the old old Splunk. That's kind of crazy. They need to update the documentation. But yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> like that is actually kind of crazy. But yeah. Definitely read the docs um, and everything. This is also still, oh my goodness. This is the old Splunk. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. All right. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. But I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, given that I worked at a, at a product company in the past, um, sometimes it takes a lot of time to like update documentation. Um, but when they do, it looks really nice. So in the add data tab, which option is used to collect data from files and Ports. Let's see. The add data from files and ports. Oh, do I need to open the? Oh, do I need to? Oh, have I been? Am, am I doing this wrong? <laughs> so I'm probably supposed to be in the, um, like actually like in the in the Splunk environment. Oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. This whole time I've just been reading through. I am so sorry. All right, let's let's open this up um, in full screen. Um, there's a IP address here I'm supposed to go to. Um, okay, ten ten seventy six. Oh, that's for the VPN. So what exactly is the point of that? Go back here. It's panel contents, quick links, nexus point documentation. So in the add data tab, which option is used to collect data from files and ports? I have to see what it is. Let me see. What am I missing? Connect with the lab. It doesn't even tell me like, you know what? I think it's like Splunk.com. Is it Splunk.com? It's not Splunk.com. Um, it's like port 8080 or something. Not 808. I feel like I'm supposed to be opening the Splunk instance here within track me but I'm, I'm doing something wrong which is kind of weird anyways let's see oh my goodness it's been so long in the add data tab yeah so i do need to open it see connect with the lab before moving forward deploy the machine when you deploy the machine of your ip access the room in a web browser and attack box or via okay all right let's do this so there's no like option like for instruction on how to access the splunk web so i guess i'd have to like figure that out myself i have wonder do i have to like start the splunk instance like in the command line maybe it's like a local host maybe it's like local host oh eight thousand it's not eight thousand so what am i doing wrong here introduction What am I missing? Why am I connected to the lab? <laughs> if I, what, what, what am I connected to the lab if I don't have access to Splunk? Anyways, this is good for the hint. Navigate to the ad. Yeah, okay. How do I get to the ad data? Oh, okay. Maybe, okay. Navigate to Splunk. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm the one who's doing the wrong thing here. Uh, navigate to Splunk web. 
It shouldn't be taking me this long at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, now we just launch Splunk Web. Let's, do, let's go, to, go, to, go to that first. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I probably have to start it. Okay, let's do that. 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 Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Let's go into the terminal. Where are we supposed to be? CD. Uh, I don't even know where it's Splunk. Let's see. It should be like in. Uh, what does it say here? Splunk Enterprise Installation Directory slash bin. So something slash bin. Um, see rooms. Oh, Splunk. The Splunk room here. Splunk Basic. Oh, okay. Oh, that's already in there, but not the. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> okay. Let's do. Find Splunk. Uh, find Splunk. Uh, let's see. I feel like I'm missing something that's just like so fundamental, like. For no reason the instance <laughs> let's see let's see what, what do we have here i guess so lost and get annoyed start the machine but yeah i already i'm ready the machine temp maybe i don't think it will be it'll be in temp this is not wait what yeah so like it's obviously not in temp what are we missing here I am so confused. Okay. Uh, like it's in rooms. The instant the instance homepage has a folder. Oh, it does. Oh, tools. In the browser okay i feel like i'm not the only one who's had the problems so in the browser type the ip address from the connect and task okay let me see let me try that let me try that let me try that, let me try that. that is so crazy because i'm i am so confused because i'm like what the heck is going on all right let's copy this <laughs> that is hilarious i was like am i stupid <laughs> Like, I'm dead serious. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Oh, stop. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is hilarious. Shout out to you, um, Matt. That is hilarious. I literally felt so stupid. I was like, what, what am I missing? Because I, I thought this was the IP address of the, um, the machine I'm working on right now. But... Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm I'm tripping. Hilarious. Anyways, <laughs> back to what we were on, which was, um, okay, let's go to the add data. So if we add data, oh my goodness, that was that just felt so wrong. Okay, there we go. Um, upload. Yeah, data from files and ports. So from files, yeah, it will be upload. <clears throat> stop i'm sorry i i'm not reading the instru instructions correctly it's monitor so to add data from files and upload and ports it's gonna be monitor right here all right okay okay all right this 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 was a roller coaster it should not have been that difficult. I think it's either me not following the right instructions or it's just not clear. I don't know which it is. I do not know which it is, but something, there's just, there's something up here. Maybe I just need to spend uh, some more time putting it on track me. Whew. 
I think that was a nice save. What do you, what do you guys think? <laughs> I literally felt so stupid. I'm not even. I'm not even kidding. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Let's continue. So, adding data. Splunk can ingest any data, as per the Splunk documentation. When data is added to Splunk, the data is processed and transformed into a series of individual events. The data sources can be event logs, website logs, firewall logs, and so on. Data sources are grouped into categories, and below is a chart listing from Splunk documentation de detailing each data source category. So we have files and directories. Uh, most data that you might be interested in comes regularly from files and directories. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, especially if you're doing like a uh, file integrity monitoring. Network events. The Splunk software can index remote data from any network port and SNMP, and SNMP events from remote devices. IT operations. Data from IT ops such as uh, Nagios, NetApp, and Cisco. Cloud services. AWS and Kinesis. Database services, security services, virtualization services, application services, Windows services, and other sources. Oof. That's a lot of words. All right, so in this room, we'll be we'll be focusing on VPN logs. When we click on the add data link from the Splunk home screen, uh, we're presented with the following uh, following screen. All right, we already saw that, which is what we have right here. Next, as shown above, it has a total of five steps to upload that data. So we go into select source, <clears throat> select source type, input settings, review, done. All right, let's do that real quick. So we're going to select source. So upload. Man, who would have thought that the basics would be this complicated? Anyways, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, select file. Okay, I'm not following instructions again. So let me cancel that. Select source, select source type. Input settings, review and done. Select source, select source type. Okay, all right. Next. So a file must be selected. Yeah. All right, where is that file? Um, tools, maybe. Desktop. Let me just follow this because it's not intuitive. So let's see what it's saying. Application database, network security. Okay, makes sense. Oh. Jason, all right, got it. VPN logs, VPN connections. Interesting. Very interesting. How long does this go? <laughs> I just want to get the first part of it. Oh, they already selected the file? That is so shitty. That is so shitty. Oh my goodness. That is, oh my goodness. So shady. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is so much shade. Like you just, <laughs> okay. We'll figure this out together. All right. So let's find the file. We're looking for a VPN file. Um. You know what? Let's just go back to. I keep losing my terminal, so I'm just gonna open this here and just see if I can put it like in the second page. All right, that's good. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's find VPN. Uh, find. Oh, it's a file. VPN. Uh, not that. You know what? Uh. CD desktop. That is so annoying. 
Oh my goodness. Should be just a folder there? I mean, it's not here. Within the Splunk folder? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. I was wrong, yeah. Uh, yes. So, if we go into the rooms, yeah, yeah. So, if we go into rooms and we look into Splunk, uh, Splunk Basics. Ah, uh, there, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Oh, oh my goodness. Should, is it is it should it should it be this complicated? Am I off of complicating things? Am I dumb? Like I'm questioning everything right now. Like I'm questioning my entire career right now. I'm not even gonna lie. Like what the heck is going on? <laughs> oh my goodness. What the heck is going on? I'm so I'm like I'm so serious. Like I'm questioning every single thing right now. Like is my life real? Anyways, where am I? Uh let's go to this. Uh let's cancel that. Uh where am I? Uh rooms plunk basic. Okay, let's find that. Um so back here. Uh where is it again? It's not even the right terminal. Anyways. Uh root. Okay. Oh, it is root. Okay. Root at room slash plunk splunk basic. I'm just gonna copy that. Honestly, just grab that. No, no, no. Only would just put the directory here. Okay, there we go. Rooms, Splunk Basic, MVP and logs. Okay, and then open. Okay, that that shouldn't have been as hard as it is as it just was. <laughs> Yo, that shouldn't have happened as it just was, but yeah, I can't believe it took me like that long to like just get that data in there. But we move, we move. All right, all right, all right. We're making progress. That's what matters. All right. So next, um, it's already in the right type. So this is a um, the type that should be it should be in. So we're just gonna leave it as that. Um, next. So I think this was supposed to be different. Um, the host field value was supposed to be different. So what type of logs are being ingested? Input settings, like the index. Oh, oh my goodness. So they're not even given like, oh, so I'm, I'm the one who's not reading instructions. So it's not there. It, it is in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. They had me. I was wrong. They want to have more logs you can add to Splunk, but the flow is just not working for me. All right, so download the attach log file and upload this here. Yeah, this is not it. This is not this is this doesn't flow very well. Anyways, uh, download the attached log file and upload this file into the Splunk instance with the right source type. What is the right source type? Well, we already went through that. All right, input settings. Um, select the index where these logs will be dumped in. So this should be VPN logs. So, so I guess I was supposed to make an index previously. God, this is this is torture. So I thought this was supposed to be here, and this is going to be part of JSON. So, oh, not, no, not, no, not that. So, structured, JSON. Okay, that's fine as it is. Next, index. Nothing. So, I'm missing the creation of that index. So, they did that. Oh, you do you have to save as something? Okay, I already see that. 
click next. Oh, you got to change that to VPN underscore logs. Okay. Oh, VPN underscore connections. And then index name will be VPN underscore logs. And you just save that. Okay. All right. So, so we're going to change that to VPN underscore connections. That's the host field value. And back here. Um, all right. We have underscore connection. We're going to create a new index. That's going to be called VPN. VPN. VPN underscore logs. And then we're just going to save that as it is. All right. We're going to review it. Okay. That took way longer than it should have um on my end uh so that that was i would be totally honest that was incredibly frustrating um i don't know if it's like on my end in terms of like me not being able to um actually intuitively follow the instructions or the flow of the instructions is just kind of off but the point is <laughs> we got to the end all right this was just this was supposed to be incredibly just very straightforward i feel like maybe well I, it's okay so it's a, a track me room there's definitely a process to it um but i feel like the splunk like uh the splunk uh instructions would have just been a lot more like straightforward and intuitive like if i was configuring this in my own home lab like i i probably wouldn't have spent this much time all right but let's just continue we just submit this what <laughs> upload file with one supplied index vpn logs missing so what are we missing? Did I not upload a file? The file just look uploaded. I mean, let's go back to the beginning. VPN logs to JSON. Next. Um, JSON. Okay. That's fine as it is. VPN connections. I created a new index. Um, let's VPN logs. Review. Okay, that was sort of that was such a weird glitch for whatever reason, but we made it to the end, and we finally have our our logs. Um in here so yeah cool cool all right this is great we already have what 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 what, what we need <laughs> to answer questions um that was a trial but anyways so to answer the questions i'll pull the data attached to this task and create an index vpn logs how many events are presented in the log file oh dude oh my goodness oh are you serious so i was actually supposed to look through the log files you know what screw it let's just let's just search bro because i'm not about to go go through the entire process again um so yeah how many events are presented in the log file um how many events do we have here two eight six two oh sorry two eight six two all right cool how many log events by the user Melina. Uh, so I guess we're looking for username. Username. By the way, bear with me. I haven't. This is like the first time I'm touching Splunk in a very long time. So we're looking for username Melina. Okay. And the question is asking us how many log events were by Melina? Melina had 60 events. So 60. All right. What is the name associated with the IP 107.14.182.38? So the um, field is, I believe, going to be source IP. And I don't want to just do like a random search since I already know the fields here that I can see from right here. So I'm just going to do source IP because that does look like the only IP field here. Yeah, it's only source IP. So we're just going to use that field. So source underscore IP and um we'll just make that e equal to um that ip address that we have here and the question was asking what is the name associated with that ip address uh since the username here is smith um that looks like a common name oh my goodness i am so sorry you can't see what i'm doing right now that is so weird oh snap okay let's do this uh 
Let's do stop screen. Let's present. Uh, 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 share screen. Uh, window. I think this. This window. Okay. Hopefully that's better. Okay, that's better. I am so sorry. Honestly, with the way things have gone, I'm most likely not going to upload this because I just realized that um. Uh, what's it called i realized that um uh, what's it called uh the half side of it wasn't actually showing so that's not gonna that's not gonna look good but let's continue this here i'll probably upload the first part though i'll probably upload the first part the first part um but lesson learned um I'll, I'll be sharing my window next time so we don't have that issue but if i switch between tabs here it looks like it's better here and oh god i didn't realize how like buggy the platform was anyways all right what's the name uh smith we'll get through this that's how that matters we'll get through this that's how that matters what is the number of events that originated from all countries except france so we're looking for all countries except france um okay i'm just going to use like my i guess intuitive sense to maybe think that should it be like a Oh, maybe oh and, and like a, a not a not france like any and not france maybe it's been a while since i did the queries what's the number of events that originated from all countries except france well i guess that would work no, not source ip so this would be uh source country okay source country source country source i'm just i haven't done like spl queries in a while so i'm just kind of like trying to like just like I'm gonna go my way around here just based on what I understand about querying basics. So, okay. I think this, this makes more sense. Um, 2814 events. Okay. And then how many of the VPNs were observed by the IP address? Okay. I think this, this is, I'm not gonna lie, I think this is a, a very lazy question. Like, this is also the same thing as like, uh, this is all that's a previous question but we're getting through it we're getting through it anyways source ip and we're gonna make that um do this all right and uh how many vpn events 14 i do man i do understand this is supposed to be a basic room but i feel like with what's happened it could be of it could be it could be difficult for beginners to like actually go through this but we made it through <laughs> we did um task six um in this room we explored its splunk and its components and how it works please check the following splunk walkthrough and challenge rooms to understand how splunk is effectively used in investigating the incidents okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make this live stream um i'm not sure if i'm gonna what i'm gonna do yet but it's either gonna be available for members or it's either gonna be just um, of publicly available because i'm not gonna i'm not gonna edit this video out to make it into a youtube video um just because there's so much just happened um and i don't think it's gonna be good value but i think it was good value live just basically like showing the process and like just failing through it um but we we did pretty good i mean we finished this room in just about like um a little a little around 30 minutes which isn't too bad um so this was pretty good uh definitely a bit of an intensive welcome back into the world of splunk uh but we're gonna be doing more uh more splunk stuff uh this is not gonna d deter us from you know uh continue continuing continuing the good work that we're, that we're gonna do um later on um on the channel uh so i do plan to actually go through i guess the next thing will be well they have incident handling with splunk this this is splunk 201 though i think it's a splunk 201 though this is splunk Maybe yeah. So yeah. So the next one we'll do on the next live stream will be Splunk 201. Now I do know Splunk 201 is like <laughs> it's 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 a lot because I, I think I've done it in the past. I think I have done it in the past, right? When I was preparing, I think when I was preparing for the um Platoon level one, I did Splunk 201. So we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, but this was this was a bit chaotic. Uh, but I do I do think like as 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 we kind of continue this, like you know, we'll we'll figure it out. But Yo, I've been looking through the chats like on the side, and y'all are pretty pretty supportive. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Um, <laughs> let me go through some of the chats. Uh, because it was it was pretty funny what some of y'all were saying. 
uh, as I was going through the rooms. So someone said, "What is Splunk? Is Splunk is a sim?" Uh, I have a I have a couple of uh, a series of videos coming out soon um, about um, sim basics, so that kind of help you uh, understand that. Uh, this is the same problem I have with Triag Meet. I guess it wasn't annoyed. Yeah, I think it, it happens. I just think uh, the key is to just like stay persistent with it and just figure you just figure it out as you go. So I mean, obviously we figured it out. Um, you know, just kind of push through it. I remember going through the same thing back before myself. I just still messed up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm as lost as you are. Just, yeah. Going through the Sock One course, have you feel the same way? I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, I am so sorry about this. I, I didn't realize this, but next time I'll be a lot more conscious about this. Getting to Splunk was definitely not clear. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel that. I think when you get over... <laughs> it's so crazy because I literally have a, I have a video on my channel from like two years ago where like i did this on my own like so easily and here i am like in front of the entire world fumbling through just creating a splunk like uh i'll play data to splunk like it is so crazy but it's all good it's all good it's all good it's all good it's the setup for the comeback <laughs> but yeah true though this guy gets it but I had a hard time joining just a minute ago. I'm letting, <laughs> letting you know. Yeah, like joining the live stream or what? Yo, I appreciate I appreciate this. Um, I appreciate this. Like, I, I, I de it definitely had me. It definitely had me, like, <laughs> I imagine. But it definitely had me, like, I was like, wait, what the heck is going on? Like, I'm okay, I've not done Splunk in, like, years. But I'm not completely new to it. I mean, I'm not recently new to it, but like I'm not completely new to it. Like I've I've I literally built a whole lab around Splunk. Like I, I was questioning my entire existence. Not even gonna lie, but this is right though. I'm 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 showing people what I would have actually edited it out, which is actually true. Uh, if I made the video, I I would have shown you all of that. Um. So so yeah yeah absolutely absolutely. Uh yeah you gotta fight through it. Like yeah the 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 key to anything. Like when you're doing a lab, it's like you just you gotta push through the frustration. Like I've spent hours on labs, I've spent days on labs. But whether it's a platform or it's you, like you you have to push through the frustration because in the real world, you're also gonna you're gonna experience situations where you don't have the answers. Like something is not intuitive, you don't know where to find data, whatever the case, you have to push through it. And that's the really that's really all that matters in the end. But yeah, this is yeah, like I said, one of my major one of the biggest things I wanted to emphasize with these live streams was like complete transparency, right? I'm like I'm not perfect. Um and I'm not, you know, the most knowledgeable, but I'm decent enough at a couple of things and I might fumble sometimes. And you guys will we'll see that. It's <laughs> this is going to put a dent on my ego just because I'm gonna be live just showing you like all my failures, but we'll see where that takes us. So yeah. I mean that's good to know. That's good to know. That's that's good to know. <laughs> I'll go over lie. That's that's good to know. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm sorry about this. Um, uh, this is my fault. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be I'll be a lot more. And it is an ultra wide screen, but that's this is not like this. This is like thirty something inches. Unlike that one, it's like forty nine inches. So, um, it's it's it was my it was the way I was sharing the screen. So, um, it will be will be uh it'll be uh much better next time. Yeah, KQO was kind of similar. So what we're seeing, um, KQL, it, it, they're all, you know, basically query languages. Um, KQL syntax is actually a bit different. Um, if you look at it, um, but it's all like, it's, it's basically still like a query language ultimately. Right. Like, I guess like, yeah. So it's like, you know, KQL, even, um, E UL, I think the elastic query language, like it's all like key value pairs typically. Um, but KQL gives you the ability for like to do more complex queries. Um, so like with KQL, I don't think there's going to be like a, actual like more complex queries. Uh, but yeah, KQL gives you, and, and Splunk as well. Like you can do a lot more, a lot more complex queries uh, with Splunk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you just gotta like uh join, be a member of the channel. I think it just uh goes to the YouTube. Um, yep, 
and you just go to my channel yeah and you just join right here and yeah uh 4.99 a month actually i'm i think i'm gonna reduce that i think it's a little too much um because i mean let me just yeah i'm, I'm gonna reduce it probably to so like maybe like 3.99 um just so like it's it makes a lot more sense for for members let's see let me do that right now um because if i if i stream these videos i'll probably just like leave them up just for members um so i'm going to i'm gonna i'm gonna update it though I'm gonna update update it um just make it um less expensive for members i'll do that after the stream but yeah that's how you join uh yeah we did good we did good man we fought the good fight so i think now that i'm streaming more i might just get a twitch account um I don't really want to manage like any account. I just like I don't want to like I just want to. It's hard to have like have multiple accounts for stuff, but we'll see though. We'll see. We'll see. Uh. Oh, one and a half years of experience. Um. Start applying like the skills you have, um, in these different um domains into cloud security and i think that's kind of vague but maybe start taking some cloud security certifications um pick a specific cloud provider and you know just really dig into it uh that's really you know the best advice i can give you like if you want to learn something and get into a field you, you got to really just dig into it yeah that, that's that's a good one too um, i have a couple of uh projects i point out on the learn to cloud guide in phase five um guide so yeah i have a ton of resources in this here and you can find a lot of things that could be very helpful with like um you know what you should learn and stuff like that so definitely check it out thank you thank you thank you i try i try i try so you recommend to potential like art what i don't understand what you mean by this yeah you're very welcome i, I hope we can do more of these I can't even, I can't even fully see what is inside your profile picture, but yeah. All right, so I think that's that's the end of today's stream. I appreciate every single one of you who came through and watched this. You essentially just watched me uh, fumble through a bunch of things. Um, I, I I couldn't get Splunk to work, um, and that was uh, very first frustrating. Uh, but I appreciate you uh, if you spend the time here with me i don't take it lightly um uh, i really appreciate it like it i i truly appreciate it so thank you for coming to the stream and um i'll see you in the next stream uh, maybe we might just make this like a friday friday night thing um i might just like get this stream done before i go have dinner or like go to the gym so yeah i've been looking forward to seeing you guys in the very next stream and yeah i'll see you in the next stream and in the next video all right see you bye thanks for hanging out